Aw, now, Han Bun, how are you gonna do that without all the backstory, huh? Oh no, Starlight's dad is a lore nerd. That's the worst kind. We're back with the season roundups, and today we're gonna be covering the second half of season 8's first half. Wow, that sentence sounded a lot less stupid in my head. Episode 8. So, towards the end of the last roundup, I mentioned that this episode was a better version of Parental Glidance, but during my forced hiatus, I rewatched the episode to refresh my memory of what happened, and. yeah, I was on some bullshit. In recent months, I've noticed a problem in my critique where, if I see a concept done very terribly, then the next time it's done, my critical senses have been dulled a bit, and I'll accept anything that I perceive as marginally better. It happened with school days where I gave it a pass because it didn't end with a shitty redemption. With the parent map, I gave it a pass because Stellar Flare and Firelight weren't as boisterously obnoxious as Bow and Windy. And Stellar Flare was marginally more attractive than this busted Say by the Bell reject. While they aren't as loud and in your face as the last pair of pony parents, they still aren't very good. And while the episode doesn't guilt trip Starlight and Sunburst as aggressively and blatantly as Parental Glidance guilt tripped Rainbow Dash, it still put the burden on the kids to be the ones to apologize. If there's anything I've learned from this episode, it wasn't the actual lesson, but rather that I can't let a shitty episode dull my critical senses into accepting mediocrity. Episode 9. Yeah, there's… not much to say here. The episode is basically Fall Weather Friends. If you liked that episode, then you'll like this. If you didn't, you won't. If you're like me and wasn't different to it, then you're probably waiting for me to get to the next episode. So let's get to the next episode. Episode 10. Now this one left me feeling very… conflicted. On one hand, it sends some very bad implications about the stability of Big Mac and Sugar Bell's relationship. If Big Mac was willing to believe that Sugar Bell was gonna break up with him so easily, then that says a lot about how much he trusts her and how secure he is in his own relationship. On the other hand, the episode was funny, especially with Spike and Discord on the sidelines, so you can see my dilemma here. I do care about the implications that an episode leaves, especially for its target audience, but I also care about humor and entertainment value, and unless I'm forgetting a previous episode, this is the first time where those two ideals have come into direct opposition for me. Even after having all this time to think about it, I still don't know how to feel about this one. What I can say is that if you're the type of viewer that cares more about implications, the episode definitely won't float your boat. If you don't care about them as much, then this may be your speed depending on your sense of humor. Episode 11 Considering that I've been consistently enjoying Spike episodes since season 6, I was kinda looking forward to Meltdown, and it didn't disappoint. The episode pretty much does everything all the other good Spike episodes have done, and because of that, there's not much I can say that's unique to this episode in particular. I mean, yeah, the kid got wings, but I'm sure you guys have seen enough people fangasming over that, and I try not to give you guys too much of what you've already seen. The long and short of it is that Spike's streak of good episodes continues. Man, I just did a video saying that I hate not being able to articulate myself and then this shit happens. Just, just bring the next episode in. Episode 12. Real talk. Between this episode and Surf and or Turf, I think the writers are starting to run dry on ideas for the CMC as a group. So far, the season has just used them as vectors to introduce other kid characters, and I have to ask why the writers insist on doing that when this season just introduced six new child characters that are begging for some use. Like I said when I covered Surf and or Turf, why cram the CMC into a story and force a reason for them to interact with this new face, in this case Cozy Glow, when their role could have been better served by characters who already have a plausible reason to interact with her? This is why I, for the most part, prefer episodes that focus focus on the CMC as individuals, because lately, as a group, they're less than the sum of their parts. And don't get me started on that lesson. Once again, the show is trying to push the idea that having good intentions automatically makes up for the damage your actions cause. And once again, no. Ever since the season 7 finale, I've said time and time again that your intentions do not change the impact of your actions. It's the execution that matters, not your intentions. Actions have consequences, regardless of whether you meant well or not, and all the good intentions in the world will not change that. There's a reason why A's for Effort don't show up on your report card. They're worthless. Episode 13 So remember what I said in the beginning about giving mediocre episodes a pass? When I realized that the parent map wasn't as much of an improvement as I thought it was, I went back to the mean 6 to see if I overestimated that episode's quality as well. Chrysalis wasn't redeemed in the end, but does that make it a good episode? No. It's the rest of the episode that makes it good. 
It's so refreshing to see a villain episode take a purely comedic approach with its execution. The plan was doomed to fail from the beginning, and my enjoyment came from seeing it fall apart at the seams. Seeing Chrysalis deal with how unbearable her main six clones were and the dry humor that came out of it was a joy, and these are the types of villains that MLP needs more of. The great thing about a comedy of errors is watching everything come crashing down. Does this episode make Chrysalis seem less competent? Yeah, but frankly, I don't really care. I never liked Chrysalis because she was competent, I liked her because she was entertaining, and judging from the amount of Pinkie Pie fans there are, you clearly don't need to be competent to be entertaining. So that covers the roundup for May and June. With September having just started, that also means that the August roundup is soon to follow, so look out for that around the middle of the month. So what did you think of these episodes? Swarm that comment section below or bug me on social media. Until next time, keep it sketchy folks.